Hi there, it's Karen Williams here, the book mentor from Libertas. And I've been mentoring um, people writing books for the last five years now. And I found that many authors want to give back to charities through their book sales. They know the difference it can make to their business, but also to the charities they want to support. But when they investigate how to do it, they're not quite sure what to do first, how to do it. Then they get caught up in the legal implications of it. So it doesn't have to be that way. I met up with the lovely um, Danny Witter, in December last year, we met at the Maximize conference and we, we talked about how we can make it easier for authors and he kindly agreed to be interviewed today. So thank you, Danny, thank you for being here and thank you for agreeing um, to allow me to pick your brains on work for good and the amazing work that you do for businesses and also charities. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here and thank you for those, those kind introductory words. So can you tell us a little bit more about work for good and how it came into being and what, and what you do? Sure. Um, wow. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's long a big time. question. <laughs> um, work for Good wasn't my idea, um, but it probably, probably makes sense to backpedal to that kind of light bulb moment. Uh, there's a guy called Rupert Pick, my co-founder, and uh, he's got three young kids. His first one, unfortunately, has two very rare um, genetic diseases, disorders, a chance yeah. having both one in two billion, so pretty yeah. damn unlucky. Yeah. Uh, brittle bones and a, a defective heart. You know, poor little thing's been through a dozen major surgical operations in the first couple of years of life. Mm. And it's when Rupert was thinking about how to try and raise funds to give back to hospitals, the doctors and nurses who'd saved yeah. her life on many occasions. Um, he was really struggling because he was running a business, he had no time. And he's thinking, how, how do I sort of find six months to get fit enough to run another marathon, to nag my friends and family to chip in again for this cause I feel so passionate about? Um, and it was at that moment that he got approached by a client uh, who asked him to do a one day uh, workshop for a bunch of senior managers. Mm -hmm. And he really didn't have the capacity to do it, but he said, tell you what, I'll squeeze it in, but I'll give the 2,000 pounds they're gonna pay me for this. Um, to the Evelina uh, Children's Hospital. Uh, and three kind of cool things happened. One, he went, that was a lot easier than running a marathon. <laughs> Secondly, the client was super impressed because uh, they also share that kind of you know, social value set. Um, and it really deepened their relationship. And thirdly, his, his team at work were uh, really extra motivated because they're doing their day jobs professionally, but also simultaneously serving a higher purpose. Mm. So the light bulb moment was, why don't more businesses embed giving into their day-to-day -day in a way that's both an easy and efficient way of raising funds for cause mm -hmm. but also actually really good for business mm -hmm. um, and how did you get involved with it um so i had a long career in banking uh, you know really good career i won't disrespect it but not the most soul satisfying uh, if i'm honest and i'd been um Falling in love with the world of charity and giving back um, for some time, I juggled both lives. Um, I chaired the charities uh, committee at Deutsche Bank where I worked for many years. I got involved in various programs that, uh, that we funded, sort of mentoring social entrepreneurs and finding myself in prison, training people how not to, uh, <laughs> not to mess up when they get out and kind of, you know, different things like that. And I was getting all my personal growth from that stuff. So four years ago, I walked out of banking for a number of reasons, but professionally, I wanted to take all of my energy um, and turn it to doing good. Um, I'd met Rupert prior to that moment, liked him, liked the idea, um, and eventually when it became clear that he was running his own business and with three young kids had very little bandwidth himself, um, I said I'd get it going. Mm -hmm. uh, three years later, still, <laughs> still on that journey. So what does Work for Good do in, an, in a nutshell? The shortest nutshell is we help businesses give money to charity. Mm -hmm. Should be a simple process. Actually, it's fraught with all sorts of complications that I'm sure we'll go into. But that's the short version. Well, I, I met our mutual friend, Alison McKenzie, um, a few years ago at a, a client's book launch up in Edinburgh. And it was only then I realised the legal implications of giving back and how difficult it is for businesses without an intervention from someone like yourself. So people are quite sort of they, they're quite oblivious I think to some of these implications can you tell us a little bit more about the the problems that businesses can have when they when they want to give to charity yes absolutely so I mean I guess just to give the umbrella picture we set up work for good to make business giving compelling and easy mm -hmm. compelling stuff we should definitely come back to that's how to embed giving in smart ways that engage your stakeholders um, and drive business growth at the same time as funding mm -hmm. cause 
Um, the easy bit comes around just admin because everyone's too busy these days. Nobody has time to even do the simplest things they intend to do. Um, so building a digital platform that helps with getting payments to charities, keeping tax deductible receipts in one place, all those kind of administrative things. But critically, and, and I like to use the term boring but important, um, there's a load of tax and legal complication that if a business um, links charitable donations to sales of goods and services, you get hit by a section of the Charities Act called commercial participation, okay. which, bear with me here, <laughs> means that you need to approach each and every charity you might want to give to mm. and ask if they're willing to negotiate the documents that are required by law. Amazingly, concerningly, um, most charities will turn smaller businesses and sole traders and authors away unless they can reach quite a high threshold. This is often between 25 and 150,000 pounds a year wow. per charity. Wow. Um, uh, so, uh, and that's driven by the kind of the time it takes to negotiate the legal costs and various other concerns. But it's ridiculous because the UK has six million SMEs, vast amounts of giving intent, mm. people wanting to do good. Uh, and these people are proactively approaching charities and getting turned away because they can only afford to give them a thousand pounds or five thousand pounds or something. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of the Charities Act piece. There's also a VAT tax risk piece, okay. <laughs> under which donations linked to commerce can be uh, considered by HMRC to be marketing rather than genuine altruism. Yeah, yeah. The VAT charge that would hit the charity, not the donor business, but nevertheless is a very unwelcome destruction of value. Of course. Good news is, for anyone who's just about falling asleep on the back of all that detail, uh, is we've solved it all, we've made it all go away. So rather than having to go and spend months trying to persuade charities to accept the amount of money you can afford to give to them and going through all the kind of uh, document processes, uh, you can simply sign up in two minutes on the Work For Good website, become a Work For Good member business and start wiring amounts of money to as many charities as you like in a couple of clicks um, and all entirely compliantly with all the legal and tax considerations I was just talking about. So we've made the behavior incredibly easy to do on a compliant basis and be able to associate yourself with specific named charity brands that otherwise wouldn't have been available to people who didn't have you know, big corporate budgets. Okay, so you do all the back end stuff really that, that enables people to do it legally, ethically, easily without the, the implications of, yeah, that they may have had otherwise. I didn't realise it was quite that complicated, to be honest, Danny. Yeah, it's not just complication, it's the fact it's physically impossible unless you yeah. can hit the threshold amounts. Yeah. Uh, so, and that's kind of, like I say, in a kind of nerdy way, that's kind, kind of cool. Um, so we opened up this behaviour to, um, to everybody. And now... We just need to tell the world, and uh, that's why we're super appreciative of people like you wanting to to talk to us and, and spread the word. Absolutely, and I think yeah, and I think so many authors want to give back, and business owners want to give back. So whether it's percentage of book sales, percentage of business sales, but it's never going to be anywhere near that threshold. It might just be a few hundred pounds. It might be a pound, two pounds per book. It's not going to be huge numbers, but they need to make sure they're doing it right, so that they suddenly don't suddenly have the you know everything coming back to them going, or even the impossibility of actually doing it in the first place. Yeah, I mean, Water Aid, one of the early charities we connected with, and they turn away three to five businesses a week. Um, or used to, and now they go, it's wonderful, you want to support us, would you mind doing it through Work For Good? And we had an author recently, again, doing quite a specialist thing around uh, food safety yeah. sort of stuff, was very keen to put a pledge in there for Water Aid and did, and it was a few hundred pounds. And she said, it's the, the power of small, you know, yeah. if we can get tens of thousands of small businesses who want to do, to do this, um, it can be huge. Uh, and it's worth me sort of, I guess, painting that picture uh, you know, we're focused in the UK, we have global ambitions, but just looking at the UK piece, mm. if we could just get 5%, so 1 in 20 of UK SMEs to give away the equivalent to, say, two days income a year, which is 0.7% mm. of sales, um, that would create an additive channel of philanthropic funding of a billion pounds every year. Wow. Um, so the potential is, is huge. Um, Mm. So, so it's about getting your message out to more people as well just to allow that you know anyone giving anything is, is beneficial to the charities that that benefit from it and also the businesses as well and, and that's a critical point to make as well that we bang the drum it's never too early 
and you're never too small. Mm -hmm. I could have made it totally easy, but it takes moments. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, because the collective power of that is huge, as I've just discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, but also we get approached all the time by kind of pre-trading pre startups that, that want to do, you know, want to embed a giving pledge in their brand narrative from day one. One, because this wonderful younger generation of entrepreneurs really feel it here from the heart that it's the right thing to do. The yeah. business should be about much more than profit. Yeah. But they also see clearly as day the kind of commercial imperative of doing this stuff well and be seen to be doing it well. Uh, in terms of expectations of customers and employees and everything else. And we, we can talk about that side of the why business is, is, why giving is good for business, I should say. Well, why don't we go into that now? Why, why is giving good for business then, Danny? Uh, there's this meta trend of purpose in business. Um, mm. And the, the research, the stats are overwhelming. The, the brands that have deep and authentic kind of social narrative, mm do better, grow faster. And it's driven by external factors, consumer and client behavior. Some stat I was reading out at a panel a couple of nights ago about 89% um, of consumers would switch between brands of equal quality to support social causes. Um, yeah. And that's one of 100 stats. On this. Wow. Internally, again, how, how your people act and behave to attract, retain and motivate um people everyone wants to work for the good guys they want to work for companies that that give back um uh, and again the stats particularly around millennials to use that cliche etc cetera, etc cetera, are incredibly strong um so lots of brands have done really well and a really interesting stat on that as well is unilever mm. uh, their until recent uh, ceo um paul pullman was talking about their portfolio of brands and they've got thousands of brands globally across all geographies um, and within that the brands that have a social narrative are growing on average 30 percent faster each year wow. than most of their portfolio that doesn't and if that isn't statistically significant i don't know what is yeah. um, so people um clients obviously that all affects reputation and reputation is everything uh, and this is going slightly off track, and it's certainly going slightly off track for the smaller businesses who might be tuned into this. Mm. Um, but as of a year ago, money started coming into the picture as well, because the, uh, the CEO of BlackRock, the biggest asset manager on the planet, who controls $6 trillion of the world's investable wealth, said one of the lenses they were going to use as to where they invest that wealth would be around whether businesses had deep and authentic social purpose. Because they said without it, in the long term, those businesses will lose their license to operate with all stakeholders. That's how important they think it is. Um, so it's coming at businesses from every side that yeah. almost even if you don't care from the heart, you need to be thinking about this stuff because commercially everybody else kind of does. Okay, okay. So obviously you've got some big brands there, so you've got people who, who can make that really big difference, but how can a, an author, so a sole trader, or a really small so one-man band, limited company, how can they integrate work for good into their business? Yeah, and just to reiterate the point, we have hundreds of sole traders on the platform. We've mm. made the behavior so easy and we encourage and want everybody to get involved. So there is no minimum amount of donation and, and we've made it so easy, it's not hard for somebody who doesn't have dedicated CSR, resource, infrastructure, people, et cetera. Um, and the way you do it is, well, I guess relatively simple. You sign up the, the platform, which takes a few minutes. Uh, in fact, as an aside, we wrote a blog a while back called How to Do Good in 12 Minutes and 34 Seconds. <laughs> we went through the entire process from registration to making a donation, et cetera. Um, I, have watched that, that, I have watched that video. <laughs> Oh, thank you. That's, that's <laughs> um, and that includes, uh, I think, five and a half minutes of putting up a beautiful profile on our site to promote your business and your giving story, which is entirely optional. So actually, you could do it much quicker if you wanted. But yes, I mean, it's the process is um, talk to us, register on the site. Um, I guess the kind of things we help with in terms of the value exchange, and it's probably worth touching on that as to what work for good does mm -hmm. and specifically why you need a platform and an intermediary yeah. um, to facilitate business giving. We've talked about the legal and tax stuff. That's kind of yeah. uh, 
critical and with, with, without the unique thing we've built here, it simply isn't possible. Mm. The other stuff we do, um, I talked about easy and compelling. The other, the other side, side of easy, I think I've touched on as well, having a single payment portal mm -hmm. to wire money to lots of different charities, all the administration stuff, the tax receipts, et cetera. That's, that's, uh, that's all kind of important. Yeah. Um, but the compelling is around a couple of things. One, advice. Mm -hmm. So once somebody subscribes to the service, we'll spend some time chatting to them, understanding what their business is, what their motivation is to getting, getting involved, and therefore what kind of method um, would make sense for them. Mm -hmm. Some companies, it's all about encouraging sales, engaging externally, strengthening brands. For others, it would be more about the internal stuff, the people stuff. For some, it's both. Mm -hmm. um, so understanding where people are coming from, what it is they want to achieve. Cool. Deep in the philosophy of what we're trying to do here is say there is no contradiction between giving in a way that drives positive business outcomes mm -hmm. and behavior. So for an author, it's say they want to give something back, but they also like the fact that if there's a sticker on the front of the cover saying every book sold funds 10 children being given antibiotics to protect them against river blindness in sub-Saharan Africa or something, that is a warm feel good thing that will improve book sales. Yeah. Um, and that's a matter of fact, as, as a relevant example, um, I was interviewed for another podcast uh, about nine months ago, under which we just did a spontaneous uh, exercise. But I said, listen, why don't, why don't I just make a pledge here live on your podcast that we'll fund clean water for a week to a villager um, in, a, in a village in, I can't remember where we said, Togo or somewhere. Um, for every listener of this podcast over the next seven days. And I said, I bet it spikes your, your, your listeners. Uh, and it was the most listened to podcast I'd ever put out. <laughs> and not because I'm that dynamic. So it's uh, that kind of, you know, feel good, therefore people spread it, um, those type of things. So there's the advice piece we do, and that's, that's pretty important because not that many small business entrepreneurs got out of bed in the morning thinking, how can I give away cash to drive business? True, true. <laughs> the, reaction, the reality is that there is that powerful win-win available. Yeah. Um, so we do the advisory piece. But also importantly, we help businesses tell their giving story mm -hmm. and do the kind of marketing bit around that. Of course. Of course, that is our mark. It's the, um, the logo, the paperclip folder's heart that everyone seems to love so much. Um, and so if you're a good member business, you can use that mark, you can display it physically and digitally to say you want the good guys, you give back. Mm -hmm. um, and people have been using it really creatively, physically, digitally, in email footers, on RFPs, websites, um, business cards, um, vans, windows, etc., etc. Oh, yeah. uh, so, and specifically, there's some stuff around our website, around other people's websites, and stuff will help with too. So, yeah, uh, that was kind of just starting slightly randomly around the kind of service we provide, the value exchange, where it's either needed or very desirable. Yeah. Use us as an intermediary to, to be able to do this behavior. In terms of specifically to kind of, I guess, backtrack to your question, the steps, if mm. somebody wants to do this, yeah. it's pretty easy. You go to workforgood.co.uk, I'm sure you'll share the link. Yeah. Um, you can register in about two minutes. Mm -hmm. um, you then have to subscribe to the service. We charge what we think is a relatively small uh, uh, nominal amount for annual membership subscription to become a work for good member business, to use the platform, the mark, et cetera. And uh, thereafter, we have this conversation and hopefully give you good advice sharing from hundreds of other stories of best practice um, in different industries and different motivations. Come up with a plan as to how you want to embed business giving into your day to day. And then the actual sort of uh, practical steps is say you're an author and you want to give two pounds from every book to Red Cross, say. Mm -hmm. um, then all you have to do is log into your uh, work food account, click a, a button that says add donation. You then have to put in the estimated amount of what you think that will be. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. The estimated date on which you'll hand over the money um, and a description of how you're linking the donations to sales, which is very okay. simple. Two yeah. pounds per book sold. Yeah. 
These are things the Charities Act requires you to have put in the agreement between you and the charity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That thing will take you 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. And once you say done, it will then communicate that to the Red Cross. They have the right to refuse your offer of help. If mm -hmm. you're a tobacco company, whatever else, they probably don't want your money. Yeah. If you're an author, they're probably, probably perfectly happy taking your money. So that 20 second operation creates the legal agreement between you and the charity digitally without you having to, to, to contact them or anything. Mm -hmm. um, then you can go off and stick the stickers saying you're supporting the Red Cross on every book cover. And then every three months or six months or however often you want to set up, settle up the admin, you simply log back into your Work for Good account, look at the active donation to Red Cross, edit it if you want to change the amount, the actual amount that's been raised in the, uh, in the campaign, and click pay and go through the pay steps. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it takes a couple of minutes. And that's all you need to do. If your book continues to sell and you want to continue doing the promotion, mm -hmm. then you go through those steps again, 20 seconds, add donation, etc. Um, and that's all you need to do from a legal perspective to set up the agreement with the Red Cross and mm -hmm. from a payment perspective in terms of settling up the donations you know, at the end of each period. Does that Just, make sense? It makes perfect sense. So is there anything that one would need to do sort of with regards to sort of, you know, their, the, the accounts when you do your accounts, your VAT and stuff like that? Or is that all, is that something you, you, you sort out your, your end? So all donations to UK registered charities through Work Through It are tax deductible against your profits. Yep. Um, so when you get to your year end, go into your Work For Good account, you can mm -hmm. download all the, the, the um, donations you've made in a CSV file that you can just give to your accountant and they'll top them up and go, you've made X thousand pounds of donations mm -hmm. and then reduce your, uh, your tax liability um, based on that. So, yeah. So that's that's some, another benefit as well, isn't it? <laughs> yes, absolutely. And there, there are some platforms out there um, that are set up in a way that isn't, doesn't allow for tax deductibility, which is a bit of a shame. It mm. seems a, a sad destruction of value to lose that kind of 20% you would of get course. back. So, absolutely. I guess on that, I guess we're getting into dry detail here, but it's slightly different subject to whether you are an individual for tax purposes um, or a business for tax purposes. The Work With platform is set up to handle both. Okay. The process I just described where you're getting a refund against your taxes as if you're set up as a business, as a company limited by shares or similar. If you're an individual, it's a slightly different process using gift aid where you can do the gift aid declaration through the Work For Good platform, mm -hmm. but the charities have to go off and, and claim the gift aid. Yeah, so it's yeah. a slightly different process to sub to subject to whether you're an individual or a corporate tax regime. Well, it's, it's good to know that you deal with both because I think, yeah, it can be quite complex. It's a, certainly something I'll go to get there by accountant, get on with it and do it rather than worry about that myself. But if there's a mechanism that allows me to give it to her, it makes it easier. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's very much what we're trying to do here. And in time, we're going to make things easier and easier and build sort of API web integrations into people's kind of websites um, and actually just suck out the donations. They don't even need to make the payments manually and integrations into accounting software. Okay. So it goes into your zero stuff. So we are going to make it super integrated and super easy into every business model. Um, but, you know, that stuff takes uh, time and resources to do that development. So. Well, I think we want it to be as easy as possible, but we also appreciate, yeah, as you say, it takes time to do. And, and it sounds like, how, you know, from my, I've set up my account, well, I haven't gone too far um, along with it yet, but, um, you know, it's, it's making it as easy as possible for people to do. So it doesn't take too much time. And then it kind of, you know, automatically just runs and they just need to maybe diarise once every three months, six months, however often to actually go in and then make their pledge. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, just to give you an example of ease, because people are scared off even when we tell them it's easy. People are scared off by the sort of concept of what it'll take. Um, the setup's super easy, as I've discussed. Um, then the, um, you know, we have one automotive business that changes the charity it supports every month. Mm -hmm. They spend less than five minutes a month on the admin. They log into their account. They settle up the payments against the MOTs they've done in the last uh, month. They go into our charity searcher thing, look around for something they fancy supporting for the next month do the add donation step, log out, less than five minutes to settle up the payment stuff from the previous pledge and, and log, log a new pledge to a new charity. So it is that easy. Um, just to finish off on, on the steps, actually, it's probably worth advertising this as well. Um, once, you, once you're a member, we encourage you, though it is entirely optional, to put up a beautiful profile about you know, your business, your book, or whatever else. Again, can be done in a few minutes. 
um, and have that publicly on the Work for Good website. Mm -hmm. Ideally, also tell your, you know, say what your pledge is and tell you what your giving story is. And as ever, there's lots of optionality. You can set a target donation amount if you want and, and it will track progress against that. Uh, but some people are more shy or more modest. Um, but that's all possible. The second thing we do is we encourage people, obviously, if they have their own website, to put a giving page on their own website. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we have a, a digital agency that are so keen on what we're doing um, that they have offered pro bono um, to build giving pages on any Work for Good members website for free. Wow. Um, so we've been doing a lot of that too. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we've kind of helped then with the kind of marketing stuff. So mm -hmm. this, is, this, is, this is decide on the method of how you want to do it and then, then tell your story with pride and authenticity in a way that will yeah. differentiate your proposition, but also hopefully inspire and engage others to, to do likewise and become part of this movement. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, you know, that's really important, particularly in this country. It's all of, about the story, isn't it? It's all about, and I think we often come to um, places in our lives. You know, I've given to uh, two charities myself um, consistently. Um, and, you know, what I find it's quite hard is like with setting up my own account is how do I choose the charity? And, and I think you may have sort of started to answer a question that one of my clients had is what happens if you want to change the charity? It sounds like that's quite easy. But how do you choose the charity if you don't have one charity that, you, you, that is in the forefront of your mind? So, um, firstly, you don't have to give to one charity. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a whole big conversation about charity choice, and oh, we should touch on that because it's, uh, it's really interesting, and I, I find it personally fascinating. Um, but just to go to the slightly more perfunctory sort of side of what you can do with a Work for Good account, um, is you can set up a list of charities and give to lots of charities, so it doesn't have to be just one. Mm -hmm. You can also... Um, invite other people to choose the charities you're going to give to, uh, which is really smart engagement. So I can give you a couple of examples as a restaurant, and the way they've set up their work for good kind of pledge in a way that follows our philosophy of do it in a visible way. Mm -hmm. It's transparent and believable and engages your customers. They've chosen one rest, the one table in the restaurant, and they call it their charity table. It has a big poster up above it, which talks about their values, why they want to give back and how it works. And how it works is they give away the profits from every meal at that one table in the restaurant to cause. Mm -hmm. And they've done the math, they can work out what they can fall yeah. over. Um, a very visible and tangible way of, of them embedding that giving into what they do, rather than just getting to Christmas and writing a check anonymously. Mm -hmm. um, and the fun twist is they let the customers who sit down and, and have the meal at that table choose which from a list of eight charities will get the donation. So the customers are getting the same meal for the same price. They're not being taxed, as is quite mm -hmm. common in some of, the, some of the models out there where people add something to your bill and you can opt out, but you don't because it's a couple of quid and it goes yeah, to a charity. Yeah, I've seen that, yes, yeah, yeah. This is very different. It's the business making a pledge, not taxing their customers, but letting their customers choose. Okay. So the customer actually feels like they made the donation because they've chosen to eat there. Yeah. They're paying for the meal and they're choosing the charity that the money from the meal they pay for goes to. Yeah. Um, and it's really clever customer engagement. They've got lots of free PR for that, lots of mouth of word, word of mouth, I should say, referrals because yeah. of it. It's quite innovative. And those are kind of clever ideas we tend to do. Um, we have consultants that just keep it simple and give a flat three or five percent of every invoice back. Mm -hmm. Some have a core chosen charity, and in one case, they define the amount of acres of rainforest that will have been preserved based on the fact that that piece of work has been done with them mm -hmm. on, on every invoice. Uh, and another one uses our tech, our digital tech, and that's why I'm sort of taking you down this, this story uh, around charity choice, because actually one clever engagement thing, a bit like the restaurant, is let your customers choose the charity you're going to give to. Mm. So we've actually built the tech, tech digitally that when you add a donation, well, you can do two things. One, you can put your customer's name and email in there, and then the, the platform will communicate independently to verify the pledge you're doing and then confirm when you've actually made the donation. So yeah. it's kind of showing off on your behalf in, to one extent. Um, but you can also take it a step further and rather than choosing the Red Cross, you can just click let my customer choose. Okay. And then the platform will communicate what I was talking about before, but also invite the customer to choose the charity they care about. And that can be done from the 400 charities on the platform or it can be limited to a shorter list of charities that the business defines 
mm-hmm. um, which may be chosen for personal reasons, etc. So the charity choice piece, piece can be done from what angle works for you. You're the business, you're the making the sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Again, what's your, mo- what's your motivation? What are you trying to achieve? So we honestly have some businesses that are very commercial. Mm-hmm. The only reason they're making pledges is to drive referrals or sales, mm-hmm. um, you know, for the kind of brand association, the feel-good association with that. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't particularly come from the heart, and that's absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. The majority of people, though, really care. Um, and then, you know, you, you've got a bunch of choices. Some people go, this is the charity I care about because that's what I've been touched by. I'm making the sacrifice. That's who the money's going to. And that's wonderful. Mm. Um, you could also say, but, but I want to give in a way that's good for business. And what's my business about? What sort of charities align with what I do? What's the natural brand alignment here? Yeah. So one of our wonderful early adopters, the business, um, uh, hypnobirthing consultancy and they give 10 percent of every course fee split to two charities that um deliver safer births in africa that makes perfect sense yeah um and there's just such a natural alignment to feel good and to keep it simple like that other people use the digital tech to involve their customers in choosing from uh, from a longer list or from the entire platform there is no right or wrong it's whatever works for you, isn't it, I think? And, and also, I think, what works for your clients as well. Um, Danny, you mentioned that you've got 400 charities on the platform. Um, am I right in saying that if you wanted to add a charity, you can easily do that as well? So, you know, if there's a particular charity, but it's not actually listed currently, it can be easily added. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we're universal choice. Um, yeah. we, we could easily be at 1,000 charities by now, but we want to ramp the amount of business givers and charities up kind of in line to yeah. keep a balanced platform. So. Um, we, uh, yeah, we, tip, we typically aren't, you know, are only inviting new charities on board if a business wants to give to a charity that isn't yet on there. Mm-hmm. But absolutely. Um, entirely happy to do that. Some of the charities sign up pretty quickly. Some of the bigger ones um, can be a little bit more bureaucratic. So yes, a bit of notice is good, but yes, absolutely. Perfect. Um... Just trying to think what else I've got. Have you got any other advice for authors if, if they wish to pledge to, you know, to a charity through Work for Good or you know, percentage of a business or book sales or both? You know, have you got any other advice that you would like to share with them? Um, You've shared a lot, I know, already today. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> I, Apart from just sign up and do it. <laughs> just do it, I mean, honestly... Uh, I, I think the thing that really shocks us in this journey that we've been going on is the disconnect between intent and action. And, uh, and people want to do this stuff. And we've had lots of people who've signed up to the platform and paid for a membership subscription and then get too busy to go ahead and do it, um, which I always find slightly baffling. Um, but that is reality. Life is too busy. Um, even with the best intent, actions fall by the wayside. Um, so yeah, I guess I just reinforce that it can be done in a few clicks, uh, and with, with very little, uh, very little trouble, both in terms of initial setup mm-hmm. uh, or in terms of ongoing administration. So sort of don't be scared and just, just do it. If it's something you want to do because it's important to your value set and or because you think it's a clever thing to do commercially around promoting book sales. Just do it. Get in touch. We'll, 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 you know, hold your hand if you need it. So, and you help people through the whole process, which is probably where I need your help next, because I've made a start after I'm um, talking um, with Anna. But it's just actually choosing that charity for me is my sticking point. When there's two charities that are important to me, and it's yes, I can choose both, but it's actually choosing. Is this? It's about not getting lost. Um, and I have a whole story behind that, but that's for another day, or even my profile, shall I say? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is there is a big conversation there. We don't preach about charities. <clears throat> excuse me um because it's such a personal thing yeah but some people really want our help and advice and i have quite a big history in this space from chairing charities committees and you know, my personal donor journey and everything and i have pretty strong views as to what i want to do with the money i can afford to give away yeah and there is a lot of wisdom and uh uh and research out there so for some people it's you know what's got a pretty logo um, and looks good what aligns with 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 what we do commercially what my clients like mm. what, what have i been 
touched by tragically. Um, but for other people, it's for every pound I sacrifice, I want to see the most good done in the world. Mm. So, you know, efficiency. Um, and there is a vast discrepancy, however good the intention and operational efficiency of different charities, there's a vast span of how much good you can do with a pound in different cause areas. Mm. So, uh, stuff I love talking about, I should probably spend less time talking to people about it because we're trying to sign up tens of thousands of businesses. <laughs> and, uh, the amount of time we spend uh, helping people on these sort of conversations uh, possibly isn't very efficient for our uh, revenue model. But, um, um, but yeah, I feel passionate about that stuff. So it sounds like that's a conversation we need to have because that's what you're trying to get your head around. Or, exactly, like exactly. Yeah. And I think for those of you who are listening to this, watching this, you know, please do share because I want to get Danny's message out there, work for goods message out there as much as possible as well because I know the difference that you can make. And actually having that solution that works for small businesses, for me, that's key more than anything else. It's something that works, enables us to... Um, you know, to connect with with what what's important to us, and also you know make a difference. And yeah, you've got the commercial side of things as well, which is kind of wasn't really where my head was at. But I can see the I can really hugely see the benefits of it from a commercial point of view. But for me, it just came from the heart, and you know, making that bigger difference in the world. And if I can just share uh, share a lesson I've learned along my journey, uh, which I think is important. Mm. If people want to give to cause and want to keep quiet about it, that's entirely their imperative. And that largely is a culture we come from in the UK, which is, yeah. you know, don't show off about your good works, that's vulgar. Yeah. So the behavior we're seeing out there is a vast amount of small business owners, entrepreneurs, wanting to do more good, but often getting too busy and not getting around to it. And that's one of the nice things about putting a pledge out there is it means you actually do do it. Um, but also the bit about, you know, telling that story, I think it's really important. Um, and if I can tell a quick anecdote, when I was in my Deutsche days, we gave millions of pounds to about 60 different UK charitable mm. projects each year. Um, we never talked about it. And we felt really proud about the fact we didn't show off about it. And then we got the CSR department got swallowed up under brand and we all had this visceral reaction that this is the most vulgar thing that could happen. Uh, actually, it was the best thing that could happen because brand came in and said, what do we care about? What do we give to? What are our values? Let's put some umbrella branding around this and let's mm. talk about it a bit. Mm. And suddenly the external engagement we got amplified hugely. We got mm. approached by think tanks that we'd never heard of working in the yeah. same cause areas, wanting to collaborate. Internally, our staff suddenly were much clearer on what we were about and the engagement went up. And so actually it was a really important life lesson to me around doing good mm -hmm. is that telling the story you know, with authenticity actually does more good. Mm -hmm. It's not self-interested promotion or showing off. It's just, it's just the right thing to do uh, mm -hmm. because it'll inspire others too. Um, and that's, you know, sorry, that's a bit soapboxy, but um, I feel really passionately and I think it's also part of our mission to move people away from the kind of Britishness of modesty around this stuff yeah. um, because I'm not sure it, it serves the greater good. Fabulous. So Danny, how can people sign up to work for good and actually start taking action with this? Um, simply go to our website, um, which is work for good, which is work, W-R-K-F-O-R-G-O-O-D.co.uk. Click get started, follow through the steps. We hope we've made it pretty simple and intuitive. Um, if you want to have a chat to us, um, you know, uh, just, uh, just drop me an email. It's uh, Danny, D-A-N-N-Y, at workforgood.co.uk. Uh, we'd love to start a conversation and see if it's for you. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And um, please do send me any links that you think would be beneficial to people as well. So I'll make sure I put them behind the video, or be below the video, and also below the um, podcast recording as well. So, yeah, really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Totally my pleasure. Thank you. Really thank appreciate you. it.